What is up guys? It is your boy Steady Chaos and we have another unboxing video for you today. You can see a package has arrived from Emotiva and inside of this box is the Airmotive GR1 reference level headphones from Emotiva. This is Emotiva's first ever release of a set of headphones from that company. They've primarily specialized in other forms of audio equipment like amplifiers, amplifier technology, speakers, loudspeakers. So they jumped into the world of they call this reference level headphones. Now these GR1s go for $299. They have 50 millimeter drivers, 50 millimeter polycarbonate drivers. And what Emotiva really touts about these drivers is that they are infused with the high end material graphene. And they say that that really improves the audio reproduction of these 50 millimeter drivers. So let's find out, right? <laughs> That's what this channel is all about. Product unboxings, product reviews, having these companies put their money where their mouth is, see how these products perform. All right, so what do we got here? Is this the headphone? Let's put this box down here. So these are the Airmotive GR1 50 millimeter driver premium audiophile headphones. And again, they go for $299. They're relatively new been out for maybe just over a year, year and a half. I, I have several high-end headphones already in my possession. I have the Astro A50s. I have the Sennheiser HD 700s. I've had cheaper headphones like the Sony PlayStation Gold, the Sony Pulse headset. I have the Audio-Technica ATH M50s, which are a solid pair. So far, obviously, nothing has come close to my Sennheiser HD 700s. Brand new, about five or six years ago, those were $700. And those are the most comfortable, uh, high-end, audiophile pair of headphones that I own currently. All right, so the Airmotive GR1, polycarbonate drivers, graphene infused. And they talk about it right here, you can see on the box, which is a nice box, a nice presentation, good packaging. Graphene Lattice Reference Headphones. So they really are heavy on the graphene marketing. So let's set this box down, lift the lid off. I like how there's no tape on it. You just kind of lift the box cover. And it is very well packaged and very well protected. There's no doubt about that. So you have a really nice carrying case here. Looks like it's made either out of leather or faux leather, but either way, you can't tell just by looking at it and holding it, I'd probably say it's faux leather, but very nice, very sturdy carrying case. And then in the box, you just have a manual, the Airmotive GR1 manual, we'll set that aside. And then there's nothing else inside the box. All right, so here's the big reveal. I really do like uh, this carrying case, it's very nice. This would be great for on the go. Opens up. And it comes with a very uh, attractive connection cable here. Now, according to Emotiva, it can use both balanced and unbalanced connectors. And this particular connector that the GR1 comes with is an unbalanced connector. So yeah, you can see that it's a, it's a pretty attractive looking cable. It has gold tip connectors, according to Emotiva.com. We'll have to see how that goes. Now, obviously it has one primary plug to go into your source or your DAC amp, whatever you're using. And then it has two other connectors that go into each ear cup. So we'll set that aside. Now here are the GR1 polycarbonate 50 millimeter drivers, graphene infused. They are very nice looking. They do feel very premium, very, they've, they've got a, a half to them. They're rated at being three pounds and they feel every bit of those pounds. They really do. These things are some of the sturdiest headphones I've ever held in my life. I mean, really, you're talking about the bracketing right here being straight metal, like a gun metal color, very attractive. And then you have the ear cups themselves are made out of oak wood. And then you have this section right here, the rim and the top of the ear cup is metal. And you have really plush ear cups. These are what they quote on emotiva.com, these pads on the inside here. 
These are vegan leather, <laughs> whatever that is, but these are vegan leather pads. And then you have some nice plush padding around the top. This feels so sturdy. Oh yeah, you've got a fair amount of adjustability. I have a big head. You have this very um, pleasing clicking sensation as you adjust, kind of here. They're a little hard to push back in, yeah. but yeah. These are very sturdy. I'm very impressed with the build quality for just a $299 pair of headphones. This is really impressive and very attractive. I like the dark accents, the dark cups, the dark top, and then like the gun metal goes nice. I do think, however, the outside right here on the outside of the cups, I'm not so sure about this graphics here and then the E, I don't know. I know the E is Emotiva's logo. They want to have the E on there somewhere to let people know that this is an Emotiva product. But I just feel like the white E is a little cheesy and probably could have been done away with completely. But on the whole, I would say that in terms of styling, look, I, I'd give it a nine for aesthetics and I would give it probably a, a 10 out of 10 so far on, on just ruggedness and sturdiness. Obviously, the jury is out on reliability. Come back and see me in six months. But these are heavier than the Sennheiser HD 700s. No question. No question. And then you can see on the inside, they're clearly marked right ear cup, left ear cup. And they do have a bit of flexibility to them too, which is nice. So the ear pads are very comfortable right off the bat. The top is comfortable. There's enough adjustability for my huge head. Feels good. Because they're a little bit heavier than my Sennheiser HD 700s, they're not quite as comfortable in the sense that they don't entirely melt away and disappear on your head. My Sennheiser HD 700s, I can game three, four hours straight, listen to music four or five hours straight with those things and have no sweatiness, no fatigue, no pain on the top of my head. These are very comfortable, but because, like I said, they're a little heavier, I don't feel as though they're as comfortable. They're not quite as light and airy. So that's one observation right off the bat. But I'll have to put these through their paces for a couple hours and see if I get any fatigue from them. Now Emotiva does rate these as semi open back. So you get a little bit of isolation for the user, but also a little bit of uh, sound leakage and airiness coming out from the backside as well. So they claim it's the best of both worlds. Slight isolation, but wider soundstage because they are semi-open back. These are rated for 32 ohms of impedance, so they are relatively easy to drive. Their sensitivity is 106 dB, so they're pretty sensitive as well, meaning they're even easier to drive because they're so sensitive. So this would probably work just fine on, say, a laptop, on regular consumer electronics, on an MP3 player, something that doesn't necessarily have a robust amp built into it. You wouldn't need that to really drive these. I mean, ideally you would have an amp to drive them to their absolute full potential, but it's not necessary to get them to, you know, play nice and loud, let's put it that way. Their, their range, frequency range is, I believe, don't quote me on this, but it's around 23 to 24 hertz, up to about 24.5 kilohertz, so a good range. So overall, pretty impressive specs. And then when you add in that graphene infused driver, I'm really curious to see how these sound. So let's bring them upstairs real quick. We'll hook them up to the Cord Mojo DAC amp, which can drive friggin' anything. It can drive easily my Sennheiser HD 700s, which are 150 ohms of impedance. This, this will have no problem being pushed to its absolute limits by that Cord Mojo DAC amp. So I'll play some lossless audio real quick and then I'll give you my first impressions. All right, let's do it. Now I have one audiophile type lossless song that I always test out my new audio electronics with when I first buy them and that's Long After You're Gone by Chris Jones on YouTube. It's not the type of music I normally listen to but it is so well mastered that it's a pleasure to listen to. It really is. It has good deep guitar riffs. It has warm crystal clear vocals. All the instrumentation is really well separated. It just really, it's a really good test for your system whether they be headphones or hi-fi equipment, tower speakers, what have you. So everything's hooked up and ready to go. Right and left. God, I can't convey to you just how well built and solid these headphones feel. It's no joke. It really is no joke. I'm not exaggerating that one bit. All right, let's play. Right away, I can tell there is some nice isolation. 
but at the same time, you can kind of hear some of the audio leaking out still. So it is definitely semi-open. But I do like how, this would be good for gaming to kind of really isolate you in there in your own little world. And those deep guitar riffs sound really good. Oh. I'm just gonna pause it right here for a second. The minute that those vocals hit, it is, the one thing about these GR1s, and I don't know exactly if it is the graphene that they've infused the drivers with or the polycarbonate drivers, but these 50 millimeter drivers, whatever they've done with them, they've done a great job making it warm. That The audio, the sound reproduction is very warm, and I like that, that's what I prefer. A lot of people, they want you know crystal clear, audio reproduction, absolutely no bias one way or another. They want it as it was produced in their headphones. That's why a lot of people like Sennheisers. My HD 700s, crystal clear analytical sound, but sometimes it's so crystal clear and analytical it can get fatiguing, and I'm sure you've heard a lot of people say that. These don't have that feel. These are going for a more, I feel like, playful, warm, and what the layman person would typically say is a well-rounded, deep, semi bassy sound. I wouldn't say that the bass overpowers you, but it, it's there and it's definitely stronger than my HD 700s. So this is an entirely different type of sound than the 700s. That's, it's good. It's good. Oh. Now, one thing I will say is I don't feel like it's the widest soundstage, and that's probably because they are only semi-open. So you do get that isolation effect. And so with the HD 700s, I do feel like the soundstage is wider. I do feel like some of the instrument separation is wider and a little bit easier to discern than this. But at the same time, if you're somebody who wants clear, warm mids and certainly warm lows, then the GR1s are for you. And these are only $299. And I should remind everyone too, that if your ear cups tear, they are replaceable. You can buy new ones and install them. So there's no reason why you shouldn't have this headphone for years to come. So a little bit more. Actually, you know what? Let's do a, a rap song real quick to see how the bass is with an intensive bassy song. I wanna make sure the bass isn't too warm and too overpowering. Okay. So we have a bass song playing, Little Dirt, whatever. Uh, and I, it doesn't have super deep bass in this song, but what bass there is, it's, it's definitely more pronounced and it's deeper than the HD 700s, the ATHM 50s, any other pair of headphones I've ever had. It has that low end thump and reverb that maybe somebody who would like Beats by Dre, they would like these. So I feel like that is a similar type of sound and warmth here. But at the same time, I don't feel like it's overpowering. The, the mids are still pretty clear and the vocals don't get overpowered by the bass. So this is a very playful, very enjoyable, warm sound. I'm really digging what I hear so far and I can't wait to listen more, maybe break these drivers in a little bit more over the next say 40 to 60 hours, see how they sound after that do a little bit of gaming with them. And if I find that my gaming experience with these is even better than my Astros, I will be sure to make another video and let you know. But so far, these are looking real good to me. For $2.99, looking real good. Sturdy, attractive looking, warm, defined, bassy sound, but not too overpowering, excellent connectors. I mean, there's not much to complain about right now. Maybe not the most comfortable headphones, they're a little bit heavy, like I said, but. So far, I, I'm pretty happy. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comment section. I will get back to each and every one of you. And until next time, guys, peace.